Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of a Doctor Who reaction. What's up? This is our life. My name is Matt. Hello everybody. Okay, so I believe that this is the finale to Doctor Who Flux. Uh, this is episode 6. Okay, I have no idea what the fuck we're gonna be doing, but if I know anything, it's that Doctor Who finales are usually pretty crazy. Alright, so I I'm gonna tell you right now, I was just recording the intro and my computer blue screen on me so i'm starting over with this intro luckily it wasn't during the episode it was just during the intro yo fundraiser to get me a new ram stick because this one is a piece of shit uh but no I, I think i'm gonna buy one by the time this video comes out hopefully but yeah anyway what's up uh doctor who so man like final episode and i was just i was just talking about this in the video that you guys didn't get to see but i was just talking about how like doctor who flux like retroactively everything that we've been seeing kind of makes me glad that we got series 11 it makes me more appreciative on it of it because like we've been getting non-stop like plot and like like lore and and to a degree twist but it's like so many revelations that we've been getting ever since series 12 like from the from spyfall in, into fugitive of the jadoon and everything that happened afterwards i'm just like okay like we haven't had a time to fucking take a break since then and like part of me is like more appreciative that series 11 existed because now we at least have a season that we can look back and be like okay that's what like a 13 doctor season like a jody season would have been without crazy shit happening you know that's what it would have been it would have been something like that and you know what that's good that i actually do appreciate that because it actually helped build a character that then we can like take to do some crazy shit and now we can see what sort of character she ends up being afterwards you know so that's that's something that makes me more appreciative of series 11 and like i haven't even watched this episode you know i haven't even i don't even know where the fuck this is gonna go but i already feel that way because flux has been non-stop craziness and even previous episodes was just a lot of like lore and, and just revelations and i'm just like oh my god can we can we go back to the fucking thing can we deal with like yeah the thing the thing that was fun can we do that for like a second just to chill just to relax you know so yeah i i kind of feel that a little bit you know but overall this has been pretty great just getting non-stop plot 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 so all right, let's see how this finale is gonna end. Because if anything is true about Doctor Who finales, is that there's always some crazy shit that happens every finale. So we'll see where this goes. And here's the thing: is that I don't know how much of this is gonna be like a proper finale. I'm gonna say it's gonna be a proper finale, but like because I know that the production for this was a little bit weird, and I know that there's like three more specials coming next uh, next year. I think I think it's three. Um, Part of me was thinking, well, maybe they could do, uh, like, a partially an ending, and then you will get the full ending in the specials. They could do that, um, but it might be more something like, I don't know, Series 4 with Tenant, where it was the final David Tenant season, and we did conclude the Stolen Earth uh, Journey's End storyline, but then we had a couple specials that concluded his run, and... They weren't related at all to him, I don't think, to, to anything we have set up before, but I feel like Jody's specials might actually be more related to either the Flux or maybe not the Flux, but like the, the Timeless Children stuff and like whatever the lore behind Galfrey it is and Tectoon and the multiple universe, whatever the fuck we're going to be doing. Maybe the specials will be about that, but at least the Flux might come to a conclusion right here. So, yeah, all right. Last episode, what happened? So we got Yas, Dan, and Dr. Professor Eutatius Jericho. We already have a doctor, that's another character, the main character. <laughs> but Professor Eutatius Jericho is with them, and they're traveling across the world in 1904 because they got stuck there for like three years. They were traveling around to try and figure out how to, like, well, they're trying to figure out if, if the world is about to end, when is it gonna end, and find as much information as possible. That's the task the doctor left for them. And then they, like, set up a message for Carvanista, 
on the Great Wall of China. That was fun. In another time, Carvanista and Bell are just gonna... They were about to fight because Bell was on a low pirate ship. Carvanista recalled. Uh, and then the Sontarans attacked. Um, Dan, Yes, and Professor Jericho were... They met up with Joseph Williamson at the Williamson Tunnels, which is a funny thing to say. And, and he revealed that he had this, like, passageway that connects, like to different points of reality or whatever, he's been traveling around trying to find anyone that can help him, save humanity or whatever he's thinking about doing. And then Sontaras broke from there as well. Um, and then the doctor was dealing with Tech Toon, the doctor's mom, who gave the doctor her life. Well, she found them, picked them up, and then all that stuff happened. And uh, there was uh, like a kind of like a mom-daughter confrontation and uh then yeah we learned that there's multiple universes we kind of already knew that but now it's like more clear and the division is literally in the division between universes and she just said all right fuck that universe because the doctor's making too much noise so uh now we're gonna move to a new one and then um swarm and a sir they showed up and seemingly disintegrated and killed Tiktoon, and then they were gonna go for the Doctor, and that was where the episode ended. And a lot is happening, so yeah, let's just watch this episode and see what the fuck is going on. I've been saying off Twitter, I have not seen spoilers because, like, this episode aired a couple hours ago, and I just, I just haven't touched anything. I've just been talking to my friends on Discord and just watching like a, like a three-hour random analog horror video on YouTube that came out last time and that's just fun to me so I just been doing weird shit and just staying off of social media as much as possible so patreon yeah check out the patreon check out the pop-up on screen link in the description you can watch full length reactions to Doctor Who episodes so this episode you can watch the full reaction right there support the channel in the process as well help me buy a new ram stick and yeah that's pretty much everything let's begin so Doctor Who Flux, Series 13, Episode 6, Finale. Let's go. Oh, she's gonna open the door of death. Whoa. How did that close? Follow me. Let's go, Joseph Williamson. Where are we going? What the fuck is this? Is this Pompeii? Like... Systems functional. Exit available. Watch me. Bye-bye. Oh! Oh! Whoa! She's right here! This is 2021. Kate! Is she here? Here? Why is here? Lost her house. Hey! Yes! Dan! Kate Stewart! Kate Stewart! Yes! Hell yeah. Victorian looking bloke. What's hard is? <laughs> a lot is happening right here. Hug! Nice. Aww. Is she in two places at the same time? Two places at the same time. Alright, three doctors. I can't tell you what I'm thinking right now. Oh, chilly! Nice! That's near me. Man, I'm waiting for the- well, Torchwood did visit Argentina. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take Torchwood Argentina. Yo, BBC, if you ever want to do an Argentina episode of Dr. Who, let me know. I'll show up. Y'all just, just gonna let her do that, then. Yeet! I shall. Is she gonna disintegrate? No, she opened it. Bye-bye. Oh, you're rearranging them together and destroying them and doing that over and over. Those are my notes, maps, and labels relating to these doors. Thank you, Joseph Williamson. I always wanted to meet you. You're on my list. It's a big list. More of a book. More of a series of books. Well, a small library. Anyway, enough of the small talk. Tell me everything. I was able to journey to far off places. Okay, next season, Jericho and Joseph Williamson, companions. Let's do it. They're getting fucked up on candies. Is that it? Alright, that's funny. That's really funny. I love that. Commander Shallow. Drunk on chocolate. How would that go down with your superiors? We know a couple who are keen to help the Sontaran cause in exchange for unlimited access to human chocolate. Maybe even the recipe. You could make it yourself if you transport them to Sontaran's life. What do you say? Chocolate. <laughs> Oh, shit, Claire? Are we gonna get her back? Yeah, they came back for her. Good news is, we can get you back to 2021. The bad news is the world is ending, but... We need your percipient abilities in order for you and I to go undercover on an alien spacecraft. Ha <laughs> ha! This is so cool. What? I glimpsed a memory of you. Yeah, that was him. 
I have a synaptic collider implanted in my brain. If I talk about it, the collider will inject poison directly into my brain. I'll be dead in three seconds. There was a time I'd do anything for you, but you left me. Oh, man. The last of the Lupari. The last? Every Lupar on those ships airlocked out into space. Their bodies now scatter the space lanes. Every single one dead. That That's is fucked the cost of resistance to Santaran Might. All right, fuck this bitches up. I'm gonna kill every last Santaran. I want to see that. I look forward to the cop. I want to see that. I want to see him go over Zerg and just murder like a thousand Suntarans on screen. Your service to Santa will end in success or death. Okay. Reward for success? You live. Death. All right, never mind. I didn't say anything. It was the opposite. Let me guess. I love how she's making fun of him a little bit. Exiled or dictator? You've got that air of entitlement. <laughs> One, I'm not fully here. That's a weird. You can't get a full physical lock on me. I was like, that's a weird rabbit to pull. I'm here to save myself. That's so weird. That's so stupid. You're cute. So you. This is so dumb. I love it. Where's the third one? Hi. Did you get it? Are you done? We have to go very quickly. We have to go. Quick smile. Don't worry about it. Is he okay? No, he's not. Santaran's killed all of his people. Yeah. I really hope Carvinist doesn't die. Divide and conquer. Yes, we like teams. Yeah. Me, rescue Vinda. Okay. I like this. This is like we have an actual assembled team and we have a lot of shit to do. Love it. We need to get you home. We need to get you back to the 19th century. It's not safe and you're too important to history. We have to send him back. Madams. You're just gonna walk in. I I hope he stayed. That would have been so fun. Madam. But it is a historical figure, therefore we cannot mess with the fabric of time. Goodbye, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you for the service. Your existence is becoming too unstable. I fear it will destroy you. Refreshment? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Man, the TARDIS is all kinds of fucked up. I'm looking at it. You were late? Horses? Don't blame me. Wish I'd never had anything to do with him. Is that a talking dog? <laughs> Doctor, we're gonna go. Awesome. We're having a baby. <laughs> oh, is this the first time he hears about it? If the universe survives. Yeah, worry about that first. <laughs> baby second. Better make sure it does then. Yeah, we're still in the yeah. fight for now. <laughs> oh, that's fun. How do you combat antimatter? With matter? Antimatter devours matter, but matter slows antimatter down. Put enough in its way, and it stops and ceases to exist. Exactly. The Sontarans are planning to use their enemy's entire armies in order to absorb the flux. I understand. Lupari shields. Matter generating flux repellent shields to surround Oh, that the makes Sontaran sense. Fleet. That makes sense. Oh, I didn't think about that. Need to get Jericho and Claire out of danger. Jericho, Save Claire, them, please. Use the rings now. I care about so characters so much. Oh, they're just out. And then. Okay, she's out. Jericho, don't fucking die on me, man. Oh dear. Fuck! We we have a TARDIS, go save him, please. Oh, you see him for a surprise. Yeah. I mean, that's gonna wipe out the Sontarans as well, right? But you'll cause everyone to die then. What do we do after that? Okay. I have done all I can, Doctor. Thank you, Ud. What did you do? You're in the wrong formation! Resume protective tracing! Ha <laughs> ha! You are not in control. Get fucked. We are at this. For Get him! I love that. Yeah, no comps. So they can now warn the others. You'll be in the gravitational pull of the flux. Dr. Jericho, I know your transport rings out of service, but get yourself to a transport pod just out in the corridor. I'm afraid that my options for exiting are Don't die, man. rather non-existent. I can't get the TARDIS in because of the pull of the flux. Uh, no! I've lived more in my time with you than I did during the previous two decades. No. Who has had a life like mine? Sir and Professor Eustatius Jericho, scourge of scoundrels. I 
wish I'd written that autobiography, but a good title. By the wrath of thunder, I will now execute you. I really don't think you're going to have time. I'm holding out hope still. No, I think that's it. By my man. Ah! Earlier today, I released a video that was like, yo, Jericho needs to be a companion. Fuck my life, dude. Okay, if the universe is reset and reform, maybe. No, it's not happening. Fuck, dude. You may just have saved the rest of the universe. I don't know what the fuck so she said. I was grieving. We summon and open the passenger form. The flux will be drawn inside. I've stored the flux in the passenger. Oh! Oh, that's crazy good. Just yeet a passenger to it. Wow, that's cool. Savior, sure. we have come to release you, and yet I'm still encaged in this pitiful realm of Atrox. Oh, you're an actual entity. Soon the flux, the flux is extinguished. The flux. You bring me here to announce you failed. The timeless child, a sacrifice she is yours. But how would I reward your failure, my services? Is gonna, yeah. Goodbye. Oh. Ascension. Oh, actually. They don't mind that. They just became part of time. So to them, that's good, I guess. No way. Nice look. Is it the. Answer that coat. Yeah, it's the dark one. Nice. I get how that ego appeal thing works now. <laughs> My reckoning. No. Oh. Really? Okay. You can leave here, but you won't outrun me. Your time is heading to its end. No. It's not. You're wrong. Nothing is forever. No regeneration. No life. Beware of the forces that mass against you. And their master. What do you mean? Okay. What do you mean, their master? Alright, there we go. Back together. Just walk off in the TARDIS, okay. You okay? Yeah! I'm whole again. Yeah, we kinda... We did it, didn't we? That was everything. The universe is kinda destroyed, though. Time to stop. Grand Serpent fighting. and Kate, yeah! Get this boy. Binder's gonna get him. Yeah, there he is. It's a rock in the middle of space. And now you're just gonna chill here. That's it? He gets the car's treatment? One family and the dog? I wish I'd ever saved your life. You're not staying, any of you. This is my ship. Well then, we'll uh, leave you to it. <laughs> wow. I mean, they have nowhere to go. Their plan is destroyed, so. He has no one to respond to. Man, I'm so fucking sad that Jerogu's dead. I like this regeneration. We're not gonna be here for a while. Though. I hope so too. I hope we do. Look after yourself. Kate I hope we Stuart. get to see Kate in one of the specials. I hope we get to see Claire as well. I like Claire. Do you mind if we don't? I wasn't late. It wasn't my fault. Maybe not tomorrow. I mean, the world was literally ending. So now what? Need a lift anywhere? Doctor? Is Dan gonna stand for another, another season Why? of the specials? Where you going? Wanna come? All right, I see. That's why Dai said, like, this yeah, let's not do nice. it. Because he's gonna stay. He has an excuse in order to keep traveling. That's good. Good, he becomes a proper companion. I didn't let you in. Yes, I was hoping for this conversation. To what I was doing. Yeah. I shouldn't have shut you out. No, you shouldn't have. I want to tell you everything. I'd like that. That's nice. Did you say left or right? <laughs> oh, she has it. She's just gonna hide it in the TARDIS. Just throw it in there. Keep this safe. Okay. Somewhere I can never find it. Wow, okay. Goodbye. Alright, that's good, actually. Unless I really ask for it. 
End of episode. Oh, there's a uh, preview for New Year. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, isn't that the dude? Again. Whoa, whoa. Alright, again. I think that dude was from the previous New Year, wasn't it? I could be wrong, but I think that was the... Wait, no, that dude died, didn't he? I thought that dude was the dude that made the Daleks last, last year. And now he's here again. And he's making Daleks again this New Year. Oh, that confirms that there's a New Year special. Okay, so a month. Not even a month, actually. Not even a month. Just like 20, 26 days. Cool. Actually, we're gonna get more Doctor Who in not so long. After I finish watching Arcane. Anyway, that's it for this season of Doctor Who. That's for it for the Doctor Who vlogs. Man, that that felt good. Except for the part where Jericho died. That didn't feel good. But <laughs> man, fuck! Why did he have to die? Why did my boy Jericho have to die? Like of all characters, not him. He was cool. Like today, I released the fucking reaction video for the previous episode, like five minutes before this episode aired. That's when the BBC finally unblocked the video. Like I released it, and in that video, I'm just like, Joe Jericho needs to be a companion. And now everyone's gonna watch it, and they're gonna be like, <coughs> "Fuck my life, dude!" Like, no, I'm, <coughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna fight this, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna fight this. I'm gonna be like fucking, you know? Have y'all watched the fucking the five-ish Doctor's reboot? When you see fucking Peter Davison, Colin Baker, and uh, Sylvester McCoy, and they're all outside of the BBC, and they have the signs, just like no classic, no fifth. I'm gonna be like that, just like no Jericho, no Series 14. Like, no, 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 I'm fighting this. He's gonna come back to life. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's gonna come back to life. It's gonna be the best companion. Uh, at least it seems Yas and Dan are staying, but. I don't know if they're gonna stay for more than the specials uh, because because the way it worked because I I thought they said that um, Mandip Gill I think they said that Mandip Gill uh, wouldn't be for the, wouldn't be for the next season I think she said that this would be her last season but which makes me think that uh, the specials kind of fit in the same place as the season like. Contract wise, maybe uh, both Yaz and um, like Mandy Gilp and Mandy Gill, that's the name, and John Bishop, both of them maybe already signed a contract that said like eight episodes. So while well, the season is six, they were like, all right, you're going to be in the two specials. And they're like, okay. So maybe that's how it works. Um, so yeah. Um, dude, I really like that episode because that episode. I really got the like feeling of like I the same feeling not the same but like very similar to what you get when you watch like um, Journey's End. You know, you know Journey's End in series fourteen, series four. Okay, getting ahead of myself. In series four, Journey's End, the finale, when you get like, all right, you got the Torchwood boys, you got Captain Jack, you got Sir Jane, the Sir Jane boys, K Nine, and the computer. Um, I don't remember the name of the computer was. You got fucking Harriet Jones. Prime Minister, former Prime Minister, sorry, you got fucking, you got Mickey and Jackie coming in, help Rose, you know, you got Donna, you got the Doctor, and the Meta Crisis Doctor, like, this really felt like we had duplicates of Doctors, we had a full team of characters that we've been setting up, and everyone comes together and it's like, alright, you are gonna go there, you are gonna go there, you're gonna do this, it, it really felt like that. It really felt like that. It was a, this was an amazing ending to this uh, Flux storyline. Like, it, the only thing that would have made it better is if it was, like, something that we had been building up for more than just... Because it because it's not even something that was been building up. It's just like, no, this was just the season. The season was nothing but conflict. And it's just like, alright, final episode, uh, every character that was already dealing with conflict, you help us solve the conflict. Cool. That was awesome. But, like, the only thing that would have made it better if it was something like the Series 4 situation, where you get all these characters that you had for, like, several seasons, and they just randomly show up, and it's like, alright, we gotta, we gotta work. And it's like, yeah, that's good. Kate Stewart was in this, too. That's good. Previous episode, I was like, so lied to me, you know? They told me Kate Stewart was gonna be in this, and then she just disappeared, like, one minute afterwards. 
to be fair, in this episode, she kind of didn't do much. She was just there and she was like, oh, what's up, doctor? And then she was like, all right, walk through that door and then you just threw the Grand Serpent in the middle of space. All right, cool. They just gave him the Cars treatment. Not so bad as the Cars treatment because the Cars treatment, my, my guy w got yeeted into space and became a stone. This guy is just standing on a stone, so I guess it's a little bit better because at least you maintain bodily functions. Dude, this really felt really cool. It was really dumb what they did about, like, the doctor split into three doctors. It was like, all right, that's fucking stupid. But you know what? I love it. You know, I love it, you know? Because, like, that's the thing. It's that I am down for stupid shit when I watch my TV shows. I'm down for that. I enjoy stupid media. As long as it's, like, cool, as long as it's, like, fun, I'm down for it. So the fact that the doctor is split into three doctors, I'm like, that makes no sense. I don't care. Let's just, let's just keep going and see what happens. It's just, like, it's just a device in order to have you, like, see all these storylines, but the doctor is in every single one of them, and they're all happening at the same time, and then they all merge together, and then you have multiple doctors solving multiple problems, which is awesome. So I'm I'm totally down for that. Someone just messaged me on Tumblr and sent me like a Hannibal meme. Thank you, whoever that was. Someone made a joke about Hannibal and I apparently said the same thing in one of the videos and I'm like, I don't remember what the fuck I said. You think I remember what the fuck I say when I record these videos, man? I talk for like 40 minutes. I have no idea what the fuck anything is means as soon as it leaves my mouth. I just vomit words, man. Do you think I think about what I say? Do you think there's anything going on up here? Anyways, Doctor Who. Okay, so this episode sets up the the doctors about the regenerate thing. And like, sure, you know, because like the thing is that we already know that as fans of the show because Because this is never kept secret. You know, like the BBC is like, this is gonna be her final season. We're gonna get our Nets boy next season so be tuned in to see who it is and they made like a special event showing you who it's gonna be before the episode even airs and it's just like i hate that because like whenever because like i started this season being like all right she's gonna regenerate next year and i'm like okay russell t davis is gonna come back to get direct like uh to show run the next uh season it's just like i knew a lot of stuff before i watched the season so the fact that this isn't like all right this is gonna be the end of her run i'm like Yes, I know, and I kind of hate that I do, though. It would be really nice if I didn't know that, and I just heard that, and I'm like, oh, no. So, uh, that only hits the people that are more casual about the show, I suppose. People that are not so hardcore that they, like, see everything that's going on on social media. But every no but nowadays, it's, like, impossible to dodge anything in social media about, like, something big as, like, uh, the Doctor is leaving, and this is going to be the next actor. Like, that. that's just going to be pushed onto you if you are anywhere tangentially close to Doctor Who. So you have to be really casual in order to be like, oh shit, oh no, the Doctor's gonna regenerate soon. Like, but if you were casual, you wouldn't be as emotionally invested as someone who was. So, it's, uh, it's the, I don't like that. I don't like that they just announce all of this, but sure. So, Doctor's gonna regenerate soon, and it's not gonna happen in the next special. As much as they want you to believe that, they just show a Dalek shooting her, and it's like, is it like this? Is this when I go? And it's like, no, you don't. It's We have three specials, so you're gonna stay for three, so. That's also a bummer. I know exactly when she's gonna go, so like. Maybe it could be like a Peter Cabello situation where she like dies, but then she does like an episode after she's already dead, and then she slowly regenerates. It could be something like that. So yeah, we'll... We'll see how she goes. Um, I really hope that we revisit like some of her like old companions when she does regenerate. That would be nice. Um, we we we'll get to see Vendor and Belle, and we get to see Claire and Corvanista, and it would be nice to see Grant and Ryan again. Maybe maybe even before. No, 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 let's make it afterwards, so so they know, so they know the Doctor. I was thinking maybe do it before uh, they meet, so Grace would be alive, but no, let's let's do it after they meet, you know? I want to see what they're up to in the future, you know, what, what they're doing, and I want them to see the Doctor be like, yo, Doctor, it's like, yeah. I want them, like, I really want the Doctor to have, like, a nice dinner with them and not tell them anything, and then she's like, I gotta go, and it's like a sad goodbye because we know that it's sad, but they don't know. I'm already thinking about, like, scenes, like, a year from now, but, like, Listen, man, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so they're planting the seeds for the Doctor regenerating soon. Um, 
I already know that, so I don't know what to say about that. I do think, though, that it was a little bit cheap how Swarm and Azure were defeated. Because it really was just a matter of, like, they come in and they're like, alright, we introduce... So we you have the big bats, okay? And then you show up and we introduce the bigger bat. The one that's above them. That has, like, the same powers or more, so... And then he's like, you failed me. Die. And then they're gone. And then the Dark Girl's like, alright, you're gonna kill me now too, right? And he's like, no. Leave. And it's like, alright, I, I guess that's it. <laughs> I, guess that's, I guess that's just the solution. And I suppose time is saying, like... I, I suppose we're saying that the Doctor has no regenerations left. Um, I suppose that's interesting because... Because that's not true. <laughs> like... I mean, I suppose it could be true, but it's not going to be true when the regeneration episode comes in, you know? Again, you can never... Like, I can never be invested in, like, Matt Smith is, is, is old and he's like, Oh my god, I don't have any more regenerations, and it's like, oh, this is an impossible battle, I cannot win. I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to die. And then, oh my god, the, the crack shows up and they give me all regeneration energy. It's like, oh my god. And it's like, I'm, I can never be surprised about that because... Because the BBC fucking hosts like a live event saying like the next talk is gonna be oh and Peter Capaldi walks in and it's like hell yeah I'm the one now and they're like here we go this is our man and they let you know like six months in advance and it's just like all right man like I can never be shocked or, or like like be engaged in a story where it's like oh my god the doctor has no more regenerations what's gonna happen or oh my god the doctor's gonna die it's like no because I know it's not gonna happen. Unless they just decide to end the show, I will. I cannot possibly be engaged in a story of like, oh my god, the doctor's gonna die because like it's it's not gonna happen. Like unless they just straight up tell me the BBC is canceling this show on after this season, that's when I'll be like, oh oh fuck, oh shit, oh oh fuck. First of all, I'm sad because they're canceling. Second, it oh fuck, could the doctor die? Because even, but even then, I would be like, maybe, maybe they won't. Even then, I'll be like, maybe the Doctor's not gonna die. Because, like, even if they cancel the show, I'm like, well, they could revive it, like, 20 years from now and get some fucking cash. Because, like, there is cash to be had in the franchise, so, like, they, it would be really stupid for them to kill the Doctor ever. So, the best thing they could do is to just leave it open-ended. And then, even then, I'll watch that, and I'll be like, alright, Doctor Who's gonna come back in, like, I don't know, 20 years? Sure, whatever. Man, Doctor Who's gonna be back at some point. I might be too old to enjoy it, but it's gonna come back, because there's too much money on this IP, man. Like, you, it's, it's worth it to keep it around, so... Doctor's never gonna be dead, and I'll never be worried about the fact that Doctor's gonna be dead, because I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Um, so... The fact that time itself is like, yeah, we're not gonna kill you because you're gonna be dead soon anyway. And I'm just like, bet, 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 I'll just a hundred dollars right here, bet, bet that the doctor's gonna die, fuck you, bet. Just like, I'm betting with time itself, I bet you're wrong time, fuck you. Like, <laughs> what's stronger, time or how lucrative an IP is? So anyway, that's kind of how I feel about the defeat of Swarm and Azur. I thought it was like a little bit cheap, but the only reason why I think that's cheap is because I have a, like this like meta knowledge of how Doctor Who works, and that is a little bit like yeah, that's that's just me, you know, that's just me and some other hardcore fans. But that's something that unfortunately kind of ruins a little bit of the experience for me. That said, it was still kind of in their hands because time. Uh, he was like, Asur and uh, Swarm, you failed me. And the reason why you failed me is because the Doctor did manage to stop the Flux. And the reason why the Doctor stopped the Flux is because we spent the entire episode doing stuff. The way we stopped the Flux was interesting. So we essentially we just yeeted every so Dalek, Cybermen, and, and, and Sontarans into it. So we just committed triple genocide. Cool. I don't know if the dead Doctor would have been down with that. But like... Sure, uh, afterwards we yeeted a passenger in order to absorb the entire flux. 
Sure, now that we know that the flux is not like this like mythical thing, it's just something that someone threw in there. Maybe I, I, now I can believe more that the flux could be consumed by a passenger, because also a passenger is made by a swarm and a sur, so that's uh... Is it made by them? Not really, because Vendera and Bell knew about passengers, so I guess there's... So I guess they're more of a technology thing, but sure, whatever. Everything is a technology thing, so whatever, a passenger can absorb the entirety of the flux. It's weird because they showed you the passenger absorb the entire flux, you know? So you see a shot of the passenger absorbing the flux and it lasts like 10 seconds and then the flux is gone. And I'm just like, would it really be like 10 seconds? Isn't the flux like this like massive universal entity that is just consuming everything? I would just be like, all right, the passenger is going to sit there and he's going to absorb it. And it's going to take like, I don't know, like a year, but eventually we'll absorb all of it. And sure, not like 10 seconds, bro. That's like way too quick, but sure, sure. That's just for the sake of showing the audience. We fix the problem. We, Earth saved good. We do it. Speaking of, we saved Earth. Um, I don't think we solved fake save the universe, did we? I'm pretty sure that everything that got fucked by the flux is still fucked by the flux, isn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna go back. I don't know what the Oud did. That's the one thing. Will you be able to minimize the final flux event? Okay, that answers the question about the passenger. That answers the question about the passenger. So the Oud minimized the flux, so then the passenger was able to eat all of it. In um, because all of it is now like 10% of it, or 5% of it, or 1% of it, or whatever it was. It's just like, it's not as big as it used to be. So yes, it's not like universe world ending. So the, the Oud did do that. Good job, Oud. But that still means though that like, the universe got fucked by the flux. Like, I don't know how much of the universe was just killed, but didn't Tectone show the doctor like, this is the universe right now? And the doctor was like, what's that? That doesn't look like that. And she's like, this is what's left. Wasn't that what she showed? And like, it's, I, I, at least I interpreted that as like, so much of the universe was gone and like what's left kind of got rearranged, but like 80% of it is gone or something like that. And it would collide, it would eventually like culminate on earth. Like that's what I thought. I don't know. Like, I think most of the universe was just wiped out. I mean, I guess, I guess we can do that. I, I guess we can do that. I guess we can just, because, Okay, that's a plot point where you're just gonna ignore moving forward. Like, I'm pretty sure. That's a thing where the Doctor Who universe is not gonna bring back the idea of like, yeah, 80% of the universe was wiped out during the flux, don't worry about it, you know, don't, don't worry about it. Maybe they'll mention it like once or twice, but we're still gonna travel around and seeing wacky planets and everything, and like, the format of the show is not gonna change. But it would be really nice if like, we went somewhere, like to a different planet, and we get to the planet and the planet is completely fucked up and it's like, oh, the Flux did this. That would be nice. That would be like a nice con continuity thing, but also a, a way to keep the universe feeling like alive and dynamic, you know? Because like, otherwise the Flux just feels like, yeah, sure, it was just the thing for that season and don't worry about it. it that doesn't matter. It, it did wipe out 80% of all life forms in the universe, but you know, it doesn't matter. It was just a thing. Don't worry about it. Earth is fine. Earth good. I would be down for the Flux to actually have had more of an impact other than just like threat for this season. Um, so yeah, I, that that's how I feel. Um, okay, Joseph Williamson. I wish he had more screen time, honestly. But they, they it, it's it is true that he cannot do a lot of stuff because he is Joseph Williamson. Therefore, he has to go back to the 19th century and die there because he's such a historical figure. So we cannot disrupt the flow, flow, flow of time. But it would be nice if he had stayed and helped. Like, you know, like he wrestled with the Grand Serpent, just landed like a punch on him. It's like, that's for you. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what a good 19th century one-liner would be, but fuck it. You just punch some, and then he goes back to 19th century. He's like, hell yeah, I punch an alien. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, they did give him, like, a like a nice scene goodbye of, like, thank you, Joseph Williamson, for the tunnels. You just saved the Earth and humanity. And he's like, yeah, you know, that that's good. I'm, I'm out of here. Bye, man. He's just like, yeah, that was nice. We gotta talk about it, man. We gotta talk about my boy, Eustatius Jericho. So, I love this fucking character, and I'm fucking sad that he's gone. 
I got fucking bullshit on that because like it is funny because I don't know if you watched a video that I, the reaction that I made for a previous uh, episode of Flux, but I, I there was a moment where I was like, oh, I'm so happy he's here, and I was like, you know what? They could make him a companion. That would be really nice because it would be really nice to have this character as a companion. He he's an adventurer. He's very curious, and he's like a really fun character. And he's outside of the character dynamic that we usually have, you know? Like, I'm tired of seeing, like, modern 21st century English person, whatever. Just, no, fuck that. Give me Jericho. He's an old man. He's curious as fuck. He's, he's like, oh, I, I gotta understand this. And he's also from the 60s. Like, he has, like, no grasp of technology outside of, like, a black and white TV. It's like, hell yeah, man. Fucking hell yeah. You'd be really sick if we could have someone like that as a companion. Like, I am tired of modern era, like, I was gonna say white, but yes, it's not white. I was, it was like, modern era, just like, England ass person companion. No, fuck that. Just show me someone that is f different, uh, either from like a different place in the world or from like a different time, or maybe not even human, you know? Just someone from a different culture, someone that has a different background, someone that would add a more interesting dynamic to an, uh, a companion type of character, you know? Th that's something we had in classic Doctor Who sometimes, and I kind of wish we had that in modern Doctor Who, because I don't think we've ever had that outside of Nardo. And Nardo fucking slapped. But even then, he wasn't like a full time companion, he was just kind of like a gag side character, but also a companion sometimes. And I wish we had a full time. A full-time job companion that does travel around with the doctor. That is not just the usual. I, I would wish we had that. And I think Jericho was a perfect opportunity for it. And he's gone. And I'm fucking sad, dude. He was such a great character, man. Okay, okay that's my question for y'all. Leave a comment below. How do you feel about it, Professor Hustatius Jericho? How do you feel about him? Because like, I fucking love that character. Like, the episode he showed up, he was so fucking cool. I love who, who, what was the fucking thing that he said against the angels? He was like, I am observing you. And that is the power that I hold over you. And he's just like staring at them and he's so fucking cool. After he fucking bashed his fucking TV in after an editor started coming out. And it's like, he's like so determined. Because like, I love, I love the idea of the old man that is just like, all these like crazy alien things that just touch you and displace you out of time and kill you. And it's just, and He's like, how do they function? He's like, oh, fuck those things. I'm staring at them. It's like, he's he doesn't have a time to just be scared. He doesn't, he doesn't miss a beat. He, he's just like, how do they function? All right, what are you going to do? Got it. He's just like, I'm going to look at them. It's, I love that. I love I love a stern old man that is just like, fuck you, ain't it? I'm looking at you. It's like, uh, that's fun. Such a fun character, man. I'm fucking sad he's dead. <sighs> he didn't even go out like, amazingly either i mean they did give him like a little bit of time but it, it would have been better if he had like gone out like an actual like sacrifice you know i i i know that he had like a proper mission that he was doing like it would have been cool if he just like stepped in front of a bullet and took it for claire and then claire did materialize and he he was like a hero you know that would have been so cool man i'm fucking sad okay bbc bring him back come on this is a sci-fi show everyone can be back to life you know you, you can do whatever the fuck you want just bring him back you know just just bring his twin brother back who is exactly the same in personality and looks and his name is uh professor justatius erico you know just just bring his twin brother back and i'll be fine you know just Make him exactly the same, and that's his name, and we're good. Uh, Will Golden. I would love that. Anyway. I was happy to see Claire back. They went back and rescued Claire. That was nice. That was really nice of them. Um, they went and rescued Vinder and Dai. We got to see Dai meet up with Dan again. We got to see Vinder meet up with Belle again. Vinder didn't know he was going to have a kid. Uh, the news broke to him, and it was cool. Carvanista's entire pieces was wiped out. So, that's sad. That's a little bit sad. Um... Yeah, I feel bad for Carvanista. I like Carvanista a lot as a character. I hope we see him again. That would be really nice. Uh, so yeah, he's a former companion of the Doctor from the old days, but uh, the Vision implanted him with something in his brain that if he ever talks about it, he will immediately die. So when he said, I cannot tell you about it, he literally meant it. I cannot 
tell you anything about it. So shut the fuck up, Doctor. Stop snooping around. So, yeah. But also we learned that uh, Carvanista did feel, like, betrayed or something. Because the Doctor did, like, leave him. Whatever that might mean. So, maybe... Maybe, maybe the Doctor was down with... Maybe the Doctor was a furry. Maybe the Doctor was a furry back then. Oh, shit. The Root Doctor is a furry. I, I so I cracked the code, man. The root doctor was a furry all along. I cracked it. I understand now. <sighs> Carvedis' entire species was wiped out, which is not great. And now he's left babysitting fucking Vendor and Bell, which is also not great. But, you know, that, that makes it for a wacky, like, like sitcom-esque crew of characters. You know, like, it would be nice. I mean, I probably wouldn't watch it. But it would make for like a decent like show of like, you know, Vinder and Belle, this like space couple and they're like weird Tamagotchi baby and they're like space not Chewbacca dog that is like warrior bound and it's just like traditional Japanese honor system and it's just like they're just traveling through space just fixing problems like you know what I'll, I'll be down for that that'll be a cool show Kate was here and she didn't do a lot but it was cool to have her here and I do like that she said like this is a nice I like this regeneration I hope I see her again so maybe we'll see Kate again and I hope we do so because I would love to see Kate and um the 13th Doctor interact more than like two sentences <laughs> I mean, Grand Serpent was, like, essentially what I said he was going to be previous episode. I was like, I didn't think this guy mattered. The only way I think this guy is here is because they're gonna bring him and they're gonna, like, Vinder is gonna get his, like, revenge on him um, next episode. And that's exactly what happened. He was just here and he's like, yeah, I'm an ally with the Santerans. And the doctor was being interrogated by him or whatever, but he didn't really do anything. And, um... Then he's like, all right, I'm here to find Kate Stewart or whatever. And then Bender gets him and Kate gets him. And then they just yeet him in the space and that's it, you know? I, I thought exactly it was going to be that, you know? Like, Bender is going to, like, get this boy because he's part of his backstory and he's an asshole. And Bender is like, I suffer because of you. You ruined my life. Fuck you. And that's exactly what happened. And that's just the end of Grand Serpent. I literally didn't think he would matter. And in the end... He doesn't. He's here just to make Bender cooler. <laughs> like, that's the only reason. You know what? That's fine. Uh, that's fine. But like, there's really not a lot I can say about the Grand Serpent Man. Just, just a really random ass character. Just is here just because Bender is here. Dai was like way cooler of a character than I thought she would be. Because, well, it's not that I wasn't expecting anything for her about her, but like, it's the fact that Dai hasn't done anything. Either because of lack of runtime, so they couldn't like flesh out her character more or whatever, but like she really didn't do anything other than just like, oh I'm die, I'm here, I'm part of Dan's life. And then she gets kidnapped and it's like, oh no, I've been kidnapped. And then previous episode, Vendor shows up inside the passenger, she's like, Oh, I'm here, you got a gun. Let's do this. And I'm like, what? And then this episode, she's actually like really capable. And I'm like, God damn, that's cool. I like that. I actually do like that. I and I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I'm actually really glad that she's like a like a one-armed character i want to know if the actress is also one arm i i would assume so that didn't look like any effects or anything nadia alvina so i'm actually quite happy to see like a very like straight up visibly disabled person actually get like a good role in a show i'm actually down for that like and actually i i wish we seen that more often so I'm actually very happy to see that here. Um, she didn't get like a major role, but she got like a good role, you know? I'm just, I'm just happy to see that, you know? I, I'm just, I just want to bring that up because like, I feel like I never mentioned it before because I don't put that much thought into it. I'm just like, oh, she has one arm, cool. So I don't think too hard about it. And I don't think I should think too hard about it. But for the sake of like, like showing that there's like more variety to people in the world, and representation, it would be nice to have people with actual visible disabilities to show up and be like, oh, I'm a character. And it's like, cool. Actually, I'm super down for that. So hell yeah. Hell yeah for Dai. And hell yeah for her being like an actual character for this final episode. Because like, I really was expecting her to just be like, oh, I'm part of Dan's character, not a real character. But in this episode, she actually did stuff. And I'm like, that's actually cool. Hell yeah. Good job, Dai. So at the end, we see that Dan and Dai do not get 
fully along. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I really felt like Diane is like, you were late, you didn't arrive on time. Is that what happened? Because if that's what's happening, then like, Girl, he got abducted by aliens. He got abducted by an alien and then by another alien. Like, girl, he's he's having a rough, you know, man? Like, and because she has gone through that too, I would have expected her to be the most understanding person in, in terms of that. But the fact that she was like, you were late to our date. It's like, girl, some stuff was happening that night, you know? Like, a lot of stuff was happening. I remember that shit. Like, let's chill down for a second. So... The fact that she was acting like that felt really like weird to me. And if anything, it only felt like she said that just to have Dan at the end be like, well, I got nothing better to do. I'm going to travel with the doctor. Like it really felt like that, you know? So yeah, that's kind of what I feel like. That felt like a little bit like it didn't make much sense. So yeah, that's a minor complaint I have about the episode. I don't have a lot of those because at the end of the day, this episode was really fun. It was really fun because we got to see three doctors and we got to see how many companions? Okay, let me count them. Uh, Bell, Vendor, Carbonista, Dan, yes, Jericho, Claire, Kate Stewart, Joseph Williams. <laughs> Who else? I feel like I'm missing some. Die. I'm pretty sure I didn't say die, didn't I? Yeah, I think that that's 10 companions, isn't it? That's a lot of companions that we had this episode, and that felt really good. Because it really felt like, okay, we're delegating every... We're delegating a bunch of different people into different places in order to do different tasks. And we have a doctor, like, leading each task, you know? Because we have three doctors, so fuck it, whatever. We had the Ood as well. The Ood, for all intents and purposes, was a companion this episode, to 11. And maybe I'm missing someone. So yes, we had a lot of characters this episode. And it's, it's characters that we know about, you know? It's characters that we've seen before because we've been following this season. So because of this season, it was secretly building up every character. So then we might have this episode where we get everyone working together in the same place for in order to solve the problem. And that felt really nice. Regardless of how the problem was solved and how do I feel about it, I do enjoy the feeling of like, hell yeah, we got the gang together. You know, all my homies doing here, doing work, it feels really nice. It really felt like Journey Sand. I'm a big fan of that. So for all intents and purposes, this episode, this finale was, it's too soon to tell. Like I'm I'm still like a little bit hyped for the, from the episode. So. I will have to sit on it, think about it, and maybe rewatch it, and then eventually I will let you know how I feel about it. But it feels like one of the better finales that the show has had for a season, you know? Because, like, uh, Series 1 finale, good. Series 2 finale, good. Series 3 finale, good. Series 4 finale, amazing. Series 5 finale, eh, good-ish. Series 6 finale, I didn't like it. Series 7 finale, I kind of didn't like it. Series 8 finale, kind of on the mediocre side. Series 9 finale, fucking bomb. Great. Uh, series 10 finale, fantastic. Series 11, eh. Series 12, mm, good. Series 13, good. It was good. It was good, it was good, it was good, yeah. I would say it's on, like, the upper half. I like it. I like it. Yes, I do like it. I'll have to think about it after time passes so I can give you like a more proper uh, like thought on it. But for the time being, I think I really like this episode. I really do. It's it's a good conclusion to the storyline we've been having. That said, it's not like the best storyline we've ever had in Doctor Who. Like, I feel like this storyline drops a lot of like lore onto the Doctor Who canon that I'm just like... That, that wasn't even part of the storyline. It was just like, we're just gonna dump all of this on your lap and see you later. And it's just like, all right, that's gonna come into play later, I guess. Or may maybe we're just gonna move on from that. Maybe we're just gonna take it and say like, all right, moving on. But I feel like with the with this doctor, when it comes to her regeneration episode, we're finally gonna see some of these things come back, you know? And I suppose the final thing I wanna talk about is uh, the fact that uh, uh, the doctor went and talked to Yas and was like, sorry, I'm shut you out. I should have let you in. I should have told you more. And I want to tell you about all these things that I've been finding out. And Yas is like, I would love that. And I do love that the doctor is like, I apologize. I shouldn't have shut you out. And Yas said, yeah, you shouldn't have. Like, Yas is still like, doctor, 
yes, like yes to what you're saying. You shouldn't have done that. Why the fuck did you do that? It's it's the idea that yes is still like yes is not one of those people that just sits there and takes it. You know, she's like, no, we tell me, like fucking tell me. Come on, like this is something that friends do. This is something that's gonna be good for you and me. It's painful not knowing. The doctor has her memories, but she just tosses them in the TARDIS and it's like, all right, keep them safe and in a place where I can never find them unless I explicitly ask for them. So yes, the doctor has her memories back, but she doesn't want to get them because, I mean, it's just the idea that, at least to me, it's just like the memories don't matter, don't they? I, I really don't think they matter. It's like, yes, it's memories of your life that like you would like to remember, but at the same time, they might not be good. They might not be good memories. In fact, it doesn't sound like they were good. Maybe it's better to just say like, all right, nobody should have this and I'm not going to have them either. Because like my life as it is right now, it's fine. Like I, I don't need to know all the things that I don't know. You know, like there's, there's a... Ignorance is bliss, you know, kind of thing. The Doctor already knows a lot, and the Doctor has been through a lot. We don't need to remember everything, you know? That that might be a little bit too much. That might change you as a person. We don't need to go through that, man. We can just say, like, all right, fuck it, you know, like, fuck it. I'm, I'm me, I'm me, I'm this person right now. It doesn't matter who I was at one point. It doesn't fucking matter. Let's just... I have them. Let's just hide them in a place where I cannot find them. Fuck it. I don't feel the need to go and actually figure out what that was about. So I think that's a good thing. And I and I and then I guess it's just the fact that uh time told the doctor that she should watch for um uh, the forces that are amassing uh, amassing to fight them and their master. And I'm I was and the doctor was like what what do you mean? And I'm like the master is alive that's what fucking means you know that's gonna be cool because it probably means that the doctor final this doctor's 13 doctor's final episode is gonna be a master episode it's gonna be fun i would love to see that i would love to see that so much so yeah because like it's actually the one master it's like honestly it's like it's like the best master we've missing so it's like the second best master we've had in doctor who in, in modern doctor who because we had i love missy I love Missy so much. I wish we could see her back. I wish I, we could see Michelle and Gomez back. But Satchel the One is such a fantastic master. So like, I would love to see Satchel the One back. I would love to see that. Uh, it seems like that's gonna happen. So I would love to see him being part of the storyline that inevitably kills this Doctor. Uh, but I do, I do like that. Like I was thinking. The doctor was like, what? No, he's alive. And I'm like, of course he's alive. Like, I, I'm pretty, like, I'm, when when he, would, like, quote-unquote died, I remember the scene. He was saying, like, come on, through here. And it's just clearly, like, he escaped. He escaped with this, like, Time Lord Cyberman that he was building. So, like, yeah, sure, he escaped. He's alive and he's making Time Lord Cyberman or whatever. And that's going to come back and that's going to be the final 13 Doctor episode. So that's going to be fun, actually. I would love to see that. I would love to have, like, a really meaningful episode with the Master. With this Master. That would be fun. I would love that. And maybe we'll finally get the answer uh, to the question of from where does this Master come from? Is it before or after Missy? I would assume before. But it could be after, so we'll see. Anyway, this is the section of the video. Anyway, I think I pretty much said everything I wanted to say. And this is going to be the section of the video where I reply to some of the questions or topics that you brought up to me that you would like me to talk about. And we don't have any questions yet. <laughs> so I'm going to cut the video until whenever we do. See you around. <laughs> okay, hello. Hello. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since I recorded the episode. Uh, so I had a couple of days to like sit and think about the episode. But before anything, uh, let me answer to a couple questions that I got. So, so Firefly asked, "What was your favorite episode of the series?" Um. So, uh, good question. Oh, good question. Good question. Um, might have been Village of the Angels. It was definitely like the back half of the season. You know, like. Episode 4, 5, and 6 are probably my favorite ones, but I think out of those, episode 4 was probably it. Episode 5 would have been my favorite if we had spent, ironically, less time with uh, the Doctor and Tectone. Because, honestly, like, okay, 
Honestly, my favorite thing about episode five was just like seeing uh, Yes, Dan, and Jericho. Sorry, I forgot the name of my boy. I, I My favorite part was seeing them just travel around Earth in like the 1900s and just doing random shit, you know? Like th that was really fun to me. And I think in general, that's kind of what I want to see. Here's the thing is that I'm not someone that like, I don't necessarily care too much about the like lore and, and like the story and world building that not even world building it's just like whatever uh like the storyline they're trying to push with the doctor and the doctor being like this original entity and then the town and i kind of don't care too much about that i care enough in order to be like okay this is canon so i have to care about it so i have to like keep it in mind because this is going to be important it is but I watch shows to have fun, and like, to me, it's really fun to just see like Doctor Who World Tour. Just, I enjoyed seeing the companions just travel around doing random shit. And there was some funny scenes, like, like the fucking, I don't remember the name of the dude, but like the, the, the Sage of Wisdom, the, the, the Oracle, whatever, the dude that was in Nepal. When they talked to that dude, and the dude was just being a complete goof. I fucking love that scene. It was such a fun scene. And I honestly just seeing characters just travel around the world in like the past and talking to like random people at random places in the world and doing some weird sci-fi bullshit. Like they, they, they were drawing shit in the wall of China in order to like leave a message for the future that eventually didn't end up leading anywhere. <laughs> like that was fun to see, honestly. That was really fun. So... Ironically, that was my favorite part of episode 5, but it wasn't the majority of it. It was actually not that important. So, uh, I think that's why episode 5 wasn't my favorite. It was just, like, second favorite or third favorite. And I think that's why Village of the Angel wins. Um, because Village of the Angels, first of all, it had Weeping Angels, which are fucking banging. They're, they're great fucking creatures. Uh, we were in the past, we were time-traveling... But yeah, we were time traveling and a place like a circle of like space what was taken away and it was it was weird. Uh, and then the doctor was recall. It had like a good kind of cliffhanger. It had Professor Eustatius Jericho. It had Claire. It was all really good. Um, and then about episode six, episode six is probably my second to uh, my second favorite in the season because I had a lot of fun just seeing. All these characters that I've been following for a couple episodes finally come together and do, like, stuff. All of them were doing stuff together. Uh, so it gave me, like, a Series 4 finale kind of vibe. But then at the same time, and I'm gonna go back to this, uh, because it's been a couple days, so I had time to think about the episode. Um, at the same time, I have some complaints about Episode 6. Not that many, but yeah. Those make it my second favorite instead of favorite favorite. But uh, I still think it was good. Which is my second favorite. So yeah, favorite episodes four, five, six. No, Torchwood, no, get away. Probably four, six, and then five. And then what the fuck was episode three? I forgot what episode three was. When they were stuck in time. Okay, um Alright, so my tier list of episodes would kind of be like episode four, then six, then five, then one, then two, and then three. Probably. The, the going, like, seeing the past kind of episode wasn't my favorite. Uh, episode 2 did have, like, historical figures, and it was in the past, and it was, like, I don't know. It was more grounded, which I enjoyed, uh, but it, it also kind of mattered. It was nice. Uh, episode 1 was just crazy, and I enjoyed that, actually. Some people complain. I've seen some people complain about the episode, uh, the first episode being too crazy, and even some people say that about episode 6. We'll get back to that, but I've seen people complain that episode 1 was, like, way too many things at once, and I'm just like, no, that's good, actually, because you're setting things up so then later you can, um, you can actually elaborate on them. If this is gonna be a singular storyline, season then you need to set up a bunch of stuff in the first episode so the fact that episode one was as frantic as it was i think it was a good thing first of all because i have a monkey brain so it was just thing random shit thrown at me and i'm like cool 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 so i was just getting excited for that and then i was like okay i'm we're gonna see what happens the, later in the season with those things that were already introduced so uh i enjoyed episode one because of that but uh, i think 
4 would be my favorite. Sorry, that was a really long answer, but now you know my tier list of episodes for this season. Now, the next question, also by Firefly, is which non-companion characters do you think will show up in the specials? Non-companion characters. I assume by, that by non-companion you mean characters that, like, are not traveling with the Doctor, but we've seen. Uh, Carvanista. I would love to see Carvanista, and I feel like... I feel like Carvanista was just kind of, like, left. I mean, I mean, left in the sense that, like, I felt like that character should have had more of a, like, resolution or screen time. And then he, they just kind of, like, moved on from him. And then the season ended. Like, he's just like, alright, I'm gonna be traveling with this too, goodbye. And it's like, yeah, but you were, like, a companion of the Doctor. We've established all these things. It's like, I, I would have expected us to have more time together. So, I would have, I would assume that... Out of all the characters, we're probably going to see Carbonista back. If if we're going to see anyone back, it's going to be Carbonista. I mean, okay, no. If we're going to see anyone back, it's probably going to be like Kate Levers Jordan and Carbonista. Uh, those two. Uh, but I don't even count Kate because Kate is just kind of always there. Hopefully, she'll be there. Uh, so, yeah, Carbonista and her. Um, uh, characters I would like to see, not the ones that I think will show up, but the ones that I would like to see back. Uh, Professor Hustatius Jericho. I'm not gonna shut up about that. He's like the best quote-unquote companion that we've had in like two, three seasons. Like, he wasn't a main companion, and yet he should have been. I'm not gonna shut up about this. Like, he should have been a companion. Should have lived, goddammit. So like, I, I, I legitimately won them to pull some random bullshit, some random sci-fi bullshit, and be like, oh, we saved them. And then he's like, well, I, I don't have anywhere to go or whatever. And they're like, all right, come with us. And, and there you go. Let's fucking go. I really want them to do that. I really want them to do that. Fuck yeah. So I'll, I'll do you one better. I'm wondering this. How long is uh, Dan going to stay? Because, because the thing about Dan is that, like, very clearly at the end of the episode, they're like, all right, Dan is going to travel with us. And it's like, okay, cool. That was the final Jody season. We're just going to have specials now. So Dan could be in the specials. I think I said before, uh, for you, it was only a minute, a couple minutes ago, but for me, it was like four days ago. But I think I said that maybe the Jean Bishop and Mandy Gill, uh, because I think she said or it, it came out, I could be wrong, and don't confirm them to me, because uh, not knowing actually helps in, in terms of like not being able to predict what's going to happen, but I thought that uh, Mandy Gibbs said that this was going to be her final season or something like that, this was the last uh, season she like signed for, um, and maybe the same was with John Bishop, maybe this, it's the same case, because maybe what happened is that they signed they had to do like eight episodes but then they had to shorten the season then they're like okay we're gonna do six episodes but then you're gonna stay up for like two more specials so maybe that's what's gonna happen i don't know if dan is gonna carry over i kind of would love it if he did actually because i really like dan as a companion and i would love to see dan uh as a companion in like the russell t davies season that's gonna be coming so that would be really fun to see um even if Mandy Guild leaves, uh, I would love to see Dan carry over. And also, I just love whenever we have a companion carry over across regenerations, you know? And more, more than that, across, like, eras, you know? Because when, when we shifted eras, we shifted eras after Series 4 to Series 5, and then we shifted eras uh, from Series 10, it was 10. Damn, Moffat stayed for a long time. I didn't realize that, but yeah. From Series 10 into Series uh, 11, we shifted showrunners, but then we also shifted the entire cast. So nobody was left over. It was like a complete reboot, a complete reset button. And that's fine, but I would love to see what, would, what it would be like to see John Bishop, uh, Dan, written by Chavnell. And then he stays, and then uh, RTD has to write for him. I would love to see what differences I could see in the character, if any. Ideally, you wouldn't want to see any, right? Because ideally, you don't want to, you don't want that to get in the way of of what the character is. But I would love to see it actually. I would love to see everything change, but there's like one character that carries over. 
that's something that I would love to see. Because we did that a little bit with Rose from 9 to 10, and then with Clara from uh, 11 to 12. But uh, when it when the entire show changed, because showrunners changed, we never really had any carryovers. So I would love to see Dan carry over. I would love to see him carry over. I don't want him to go. So that would be really nice. Um, okay, so I think that's it for questions. Who do, you, who do I think will show up in the specials? I, I guess Carvanista and Kate. If Carvanista shows up, I guess there's a possibility that we'll see um, Bender and Bell. But I'll be honest with you, I kind of don't care about Bender and Bell. Uh, those are not characters I was uh, that into. Uh, I didn't mind them. I just didn't find them that interesting. If anything, I would like to see from Flux, I would like to see like Claire more, you know? Just Jericho and Claire, I, I really enjoyed them, so that would be really nice. If you want a meme answer, I would like to see the, the Sunterran that ate the chocolate. I would like to see that guy back, so yeah. Okay, and like I said a couple minutes ago, um, I had a couple of days to sit and think about the episode. I haven't rewatched it because I haven't edited the episode yet because I'm lazy. Well, I had stuff to do. So yeah, that it. I mean, I'm also not in a hurry anymore. So now I'll just edit the episode and then the BBC will unlock, unblock it whenever they do and that'll be fine, you know? It might be like next Wednesday. I don't care when this is gonna come out. I wanna say like, I have a time to breathe now. But yeah, it's been a couple days. I think that since then, I've kind of, uh, my opinion of the final episode, episode six has grown like a little bit more negative, but not like, not mostly negative, just a little bit more negative because I, uh, I've thought about it and it's like, yeah, at the end, whatever Dai said to Dan and Dan is just like, okay, I'm going to travel now. Like that really felt like a loop. And I, I said it too. I, I realized that I noticed it. It was like, it was very much like this makes no sense, or at least it doesn't feel like it makes sense, and it's it only happened just to have Dan tag along. And it's like, if I can notice that, that's probably not a good thing, but when I originally watched it, I kind of just overlooked it. I was like, yeah, that probably happened, and then I just kind of moved on. Now I think about it more, and I'm like, yeah, that's probably not that great if I notice it that bad. Um, and then a couple other things. Like, in general, I just feel like that final episode, it really felt like it suffered from the runtime that they had. It really suffered from having only six episodes to work with. Like, it really felt like we had a lot to go over, and six episodes was not enough. Like, almost if they had, like, one more episode, this probably would have been, like, a lot better. If instead of six, it was seven, you know? If it was seven episodes, and then you... Like, essentially, if everything was the same, except that episode 6 was, like, a little bit slower and split into two episodes, that probably would have been a lot better, actually. That probably would have been so much better. Um, because I felt like we didn't spend that much time with any of the characters that, even though I'm, I kind of care about and I look at them and I'm like, hell yeah, you know, like, Carbon I see him and I'm like, let's go. I see Jerrigan and I'm like, let's go. I still feel like we should have had them on camera more for the finale, you know? They should have done more stuff. Because, Car what the fuck did Carbonista do? Like, okay, Carbonista, so he went with the doctor, they allowed themselves to be captured, I think. I think that's what they did in Chile, that was cool. Um, then they told Carbonista, we murdered your entire species. Then Carbonista started howling. Uh, and then Carvinista said, I'm gonna kill every last Sontaran, and I was like, let's fucking go, I hope you do. Um, but, and then he escaped, Dan allowed him to escape, on a scene that was like a little bit weird, because Dan made like a joke, and then, uh, Carv and Carv we just had like a really like depressing scene with Carvinista, because his people all died, and I know that Dan doesn't know that, but the fact that that scene was there was a little bit weird. Uh, Carvinista is like, I'll do this for my people, and they just like press the button, and like the Sontarans exploded and died or whatever, which was also a little bit weird, because like, I understand, you know, haha, ha, bad guy loses, they all explode and die, whatever, but like, and I think I mentioned it too, during the previous, uh, during the review I did a couple days ago, which to you was like 20 minutes ago, <laughs> this is weird, but I think I mentioned it, it's the fact that in like series 4, I remember the 10 Doctor being like, no, how could you do that, and then in this episode, the 13 Doctor is like, hell yeah, it's like, yeah, let's blow them all up, let's commit genocide, because... 
and and that's the other elephant in the room that we need to address that i I address. I kept talking about it, and I was like, that's a little bit weird. It's the idea that, like, didn't most of the universe just, like, die? And, like, I'll continue to bring that up, and I understand that it's, like, okay, the the focus of the show will only be what the show wants to show you. Therefore, we're not gonna... We're not gonna address it too much because like whatever the universe is really big so we can keep traveling and seeing the places that that are just still alive and we're probably not gonna address the flux again and i said that it probably would be really awesome to show to travel to like planets that are really fucked up and then it's like oh this is the aftermath of the flux and it's like oh okay there's like a little bit of continuity there but like i think we should have like spent like a little bit more time with the doctor addressing what just happened, you know? I feel like if we had two episodes, that definitely would have happened, and the fact that it didn't was a little bit weird, because it really, the resolution of the episode was really very much like, Earth save good, we do it, you know? Like, it was very like, okay, Suntaran's down, we, the Sir Grand Serpent fought, Earth good, yeah, everyone clapped, and then, episode ended and it's like okay cool but like that didn't fix anything that didn't fix the main prop i mean yeah we did like absorb the flux or whatever into like the passenger i actually do like that um that solution i actually do like that one but the idea that like the universe got like fucked and nobody addressed it and the fact that didn't the flux happen just because the doctor was nooping around too much and and Tiktaun didn't want the doctor to find out and that's the only reason why the flux happened. I could be misunderstanding that, but I think that that's why that happened. Which means that the universe was like 80% destroyed because of the Doctor. Like, not directly, but like, I feel like after this was over, the Doctor should have had like at least like one or two scenes when, when the Doctor should have been like really fucked up, being like, I can't believe all those people died. And then maybe have like a scene when they're like, and it was my fault. It wasn't directly my fault, but I feel like it was my fault, you know? Like, something like that. That would have added a lot, because I feel like the 13th Doctor would care. And the fact that it, she... And I'm sure she does care, but the fact that we don't see her care feels really off. It feels really off that we just, like... I mean, okay, we did have, like, two scenes. We did have the scene where the Doctor talks to Yes, and it's like, I should have let you in, and I there's so much I want to tell you. But that wasn't really a scene about, like, reminiscing what just happened. It was just a scene about, like, I should have relied on you more and open and been more honest. But that's not really reminiscing on anything that just happened. That's just like, yeah, maybe I should have talked more. It's like, yes, but also the universe just died. Let's talk about that. And then the doctor did have the thing with the, uh, with the watch. And it's like, I don't want to open it and just hide it where I can never find it unless I really, really ask for it. I did like that because I, I don't want the doctor to like open that ever, you know? And maybe, maybe it will be open and maybe the insights would be like nothing. Like, that would be cool, actually. But I don't want to know ever, like, about, like, the past life of the Doctor before the, before the Doctor, proper Doctor. You know, I don't ever want to see that. <laughs> because I almost just want to keep that in mystery, you know? Like, I enjoy the idea of, like, not knowing. It's just something that is not that clear. And it will never be clear. And that's fine, actually. And that's just something I, I want. And I want the Doctor to stop caring about that past and whatever that past might have had. It's just like, no, we we worry about the future. We worry about the now, what's happening right now and what we can do right now. I want that um, to be the Doctor's choice. And that was a little bit what happened at the end and that was good. Uh, but like, the universe just ended. Let's talk about that. <laughs> and the fact that the reason we didn't talk about it and the reason we didn't even see the Doctor react to it almost, it was like, it felt weird feel really weird so i almost want the next episode to have that but it's probably not gonna do that so also vendor and bell i kind of didn't care too much about them and i felt like their resolution there wasn't a resolution they just they just met and then and then they like use the ships to like fuck the sundance up and then that's it it's just like all right cool this characters kind of didn't go anywhere kate didn't get to do a lot claire showed up again which is good because I didn't think she would show up again. So the fact that she did, I'm just like, okay, that's cool. Because I like her. But uh, would it, she also didn't get to do much. Like, I felt like we had a bunch of characters show up. And they did do stuff. 
they did help towards the like grand their plan, but um, there wasn't a lot to them, and I would have liked it if there was. So I almost again, I would love, I would have loved it if this episode was a two-parter, like episode six was actually episode six and episode seven. If the season had been one episode longer. And the final episode would have had like a little bit more screen time with everybody. They did get to do a little bit more. And the doctor would have had like a little bit more acknowledgement of what just transpired. Because it felt like we're just kind of like, don't worry about it. Which, fine, you know, if like, okay. So what it comes down to is that like, I enjoyed the episode. But like the reason why I enjoyed it is because I didn't think too hard about it. And if I start thinking about it more and more... I start being like, okay, but that that was weird. That didn't make much sense. That could have been better. That doesn't feel right, you know? So like, so I suppose if you just watch this, you can enjoy it, you know? Just like, because like, again, I said this before, I have a monkey brain. So like, I see things and my brain produces the good juice. And then I'm like, yeah. And that's it, that's the entire process. If I try to think about it too hard, I also enjoy that, but it depends on the show. And I feel like this episode was one of the episodes that I had to, like, not engage too hard with it, you know? If I go really into it, really into detail, I start being like, okay, but that was weird. I have to not do that with this episode. With some of the other episodes, you can do that. Because, like, that's the other thing. It's that this season gave you a lot of room to, like, try and think about what's happening, try, about, try to theorize. But at the end of the day, I felt like this setup for the season was probably better than the resolution to it. And I felt like the resolution to it would have benefited a lot from having more screen time. And a couple more scenes that I think would have made this so much better. So I, I think that's it. Like, I think that's how I feel about it. And this is like, somebody asked me, somebody asked me like on episode like two or three, and I think I said it on camera. I Somebody asked me, like, how do you feel about this season compared to other seasons? And my answer was, I don't think I can tell you. Like, I don't think I can give you a proper answer until the season is over. Because a lot of what the early episodes of the season do is that they set things up for later. Because uh, this is a single storyline season. Therefore, episode one, like... Episode one doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. You don't have to care too much about what's happening in it, unless that you have to because of what happens later. So the fact that the season is a single storyline season means that you can only judge it after it's over as like a one thing, you know. And as a one thing, I felt like this season. And this is the. This is the problem. Is that like whenever you have like a lot of like events and questions and and and, and like mysteries that you're setting up, you kind of really need to nail that landing. And if you don't, the kind of, the whole thing is kind of a spoiler a little bit. And I think the landing for this season, like the, the actual, like the actual solving of the mystery, it wasn't bad. It was just like, not great. <laughs> it was like a solid six or seven out of 10, which is like, sure, that's fine. They're serviceable, but like, yeah, like Swarm and Assure just kind of got defeated by a greater entity that disintegrated them in the way that they disintegrate others. Um, the Flux was solved by throwing a MacGuffin into it. I mean, given it wasn't just a MacGuffin, it was something that was a constant from all these episodes. So it makes sense to actually like, because we know how it works, uh, it would make sense to use that as a way to solve the problem. And I actually kind of enjoyed it. And the Ood helped reduce the amount of Flux, so it kind of makes sense. But um, Swarm of Sure was kind of a letdown. Time itself, because like that's the thing, I'm pretty sure I'm repeating myself at this point. This is why I don't do like reviews of episodes like multiple times, because like I would just repeat myself, I think. And I wouldn't know what part of myself I am repeating, but I feel like I've said this before. It's the idea that like the solution was that Swarm of Sure were like consumed by time or whatever. So like a new entity, which is just time, just took care of them. And then time. We were like, okay, it's time gonna take care of the doctor. And then the doctor is like, no. I mean, time is like, no, because someone else is gonna take care of you. 
the, the master's gonna fuck you up in a couple episodes you're gonna die and it's like okay cool and the problem is that i as a viewer i know like that's not gonna happen the doctor's gonna live and another one is gonna come in this origination is gonna end but there there will be more and the doctor's gonna live and we're just gonna do this song and dance once again so like that the fact that the foreshadowing was tied to like a reason why the doctor didn't die then you know it's like it's this thing of like i'm not killing you right now because you're gonna die in like two days so yeah but if i know that i'm not going to die in two days then it's like okay cool i just i just win then it's a win-win situation cool nice I, I don't have to worry about anything and the fact that that's what defeated the bad guys it was just like all right they, they just kind of crash and burn they didn't matter too much and there you go so like i feel like a lot of flux was a strong setup and the resolution that also could have been fixed by like extra runtime you know if they had had one more episode they probably would have could have come with something else to deal with them so in general in general, I feel like this season, if they had had, like, one more episode, it would have been, like, really good. Like, if they had, like, one more episode to, like, fleshing out some more ideas, that would have been fantastic. But the fact that they didn't, and it just kind of ended the way it did, I felt, like, kind of fell flat a little bit. And it, it's weird that I'm, I'm recording this, because I felt like my initial, like, recording that wasn't the exact same video as this one was generally positive and this sounds generally negative and the thing is that i don't think i dislike that episode i don't actually it's good i enjoyed it and like that's the thing is that i enjoyed just seeing characters run around doing stuff and fun lot dialogue and the santan eating the chocolate that was great so like i enjoyed seeing a lot of stuff in that episode but at the end of the day if you want me to like sit and think about it and like analyze it, I'm like, yeah, this thing is not that <laughs> that fantastic. Like there's a couple things that I'm just like, yeah, that doesn't make much sense. That's a little bit cheap. So I suppose that's going to be my final review for this episode and I suppose the entire season. Um, it was really strong at times. It was a very strong setup and there were some episodes that I actually really enjoyed a lot. But like the unraveling of the mystery and the way that it ultimately came to a close, it didn't feel that great. <laughs> it was just, it just, it just kind, it was just kind of average. That's how I feel. If Jericho had lived, though, I would have feel so much differently about that episode. That would have been my favorite episode of the show if Jericho had lived, and then he jumps into the TARDIS and is like, "I'm gonna tag along." That would have been my favorite episode of like the the past like three years. That would have been my favorite episode if Jericho had lived. You had one job and you didn't fucking. Damn it! Okay, I think that's gonna be it though for this uh, episode of a Doctor Who reaction. And I suppose we'll see you in New Year. So I think, yeah, I think the new, new episode comes out in New Year. So yeah, I'll see you then. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for hanging out. See you next time. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching this episode of Reaction to Doctor Who. If you'd like to watch full length reactions to this episode and the entire season, you can do so over at the Patreon or if you just want to support the channel. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much to these lovely patrons over here, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.